Um, I, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the organizers. Are there some announcements to make before we start the session? No, all good. And I, I see uh, Hi Hayuka. This is Johan Pop here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I hear you very well. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yeah, everything is good, and we can um, we can see your your first slide. So we are mm -hmm. looking forward to your 30-minute uh, presentation. Please. Okay. Th thank you, Ivan, uh, and thank you for all the organizers for inviting me. And and it's uh, I'm sorry not to be there in presence. Uh, so I, I will talk today about uh, kind of uh, it's a. Uh, chain of experiments on, on bolometric uh, detection of uh, thermal microwave photons in, in superconducting circuits. Uh, for some of you, this may be a partly known story, but I, I'm sure there will be some parts which are new to everybody. So uh, what is it all about? It is uh, essentially, uh, we are interested in, in, in looking at uh, heat transport. So uh, as a kind of a appetizer, I just give it here a a brief uh, recap about thermal quant uh, conductance in, 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 in quantum systems, what, what, uh, what is uh, sort of known over the years. So as we all know, electrical conductance in, in uh, ballistic contacts is, uh, is uh, quantized in, in, uh, in units of E squared over A's. And similarly, uh, in, in, in these systems, uh, uh, there is kind of a Wiedemann-Franz law uh, 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 holding uh, in in the sense that uh, thermal conductance also assumes uh, assumes uh, uh, values which are are uh, are discrete uh, and and this has been uh, this has been demonstrated in several experiments and 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 the uh, thing is that it's known that uh, it does not this thermal conductance quantum uh, does not only apply for for uh, electrons but it also applies for any types of uh, carriers like phonons, uh, which has uh, like already experienced for a very long time, although there are still uh, questions about this, uh, how to really reliably observe that. Uh, there are uh, precise experiments on electrons and onions, and, and, and what we are now talking about is photons, microwave photons, and um, we, have, uh, we have a review article with my uh, former student, uh, Bayan Karimi, on this uh, uh, on this topic in, in a recent volume of RMT. So, uh, so about the heat uh, transported by photons, this is a kind of a simple uh, story uh, on, on, um, on, on, in a nutshell. Uh, so if you assume this uh, kind of uh, Johnson Nyquist uh, setup where you have, um, where you have uh, two resistors which are not really uh, diffusively conducting heat between each other, you still have uh, the noise, the uh, thermal noise that produces current in the circuit, and and by uh, uh, calculation, which is just uh, two or three lines, you can uh, uh, you can uh, obtain the result that that the net current between the heat current between the two resistors is uh, is given by by this uh, by this formula in the in the regime where the temperature difference is small. So you get that uh, it's really uh, governed by the quantum of thermal conductance, and for larger Larger uh, temperature differences. It is uh, there's a quadratic dependence on the two temperatures, and and if the resistors are not equal, there is this kind of a matching factor, which is naturally one when the resistors are equal. So this is kind of the starting point, and uh, and how to really now I give you a little bit of a toolbox. So this is maybe familiar to some of the experimental audience already, but uh, how really to measure the heat? So uh, to measure the Heat, heat current, so what we typically do is that we have uh, either one or two absorbers like this, which are like mesoscopic electron uh, absorbers. We apply heat uh, to one of them and, and, uh, and we measure the temperature usually uh, uh, of both, both of the two absorbers. And, and then uh, due to the continuity of, of heat current here, we can, we can find that, that uh, the change of the temperatures of the two, two absorbers here they obey uh, this simple uh, expression. It's like a, a Kirchhoff's law uh, for heat currents. So uh, if, if the thermal conductance is, un, uh, th this thermal conductance to the bath or the second one is known, then you can, you can determine the, the, the unknown thermal conductance that you are, you are interested in. So, uh, but what are the other elements to do this are naturally that uh, we need uh, to measure 
temperature. So this is, uh, of course, a crucial and, and kind of the bread and butter for us in this context is to use uh, just a, uh, a low frequency, let's say DC uh, temp temperature probing. And this we do with uh, tunnel probes uh, between a superconductor and normal conductor. So here is our typical absorber here. And when you measure the current, uh, we know that, uh, that the current between these two is depending on the, on the distribution of electrons in, the, uh, in, in this normal conductor and the density of states in the superconductor. And, and it only probes the temperature in this case of the, of the normal metal if you are well below the, gap, uh, below the DC of the, of the superconductor. And in fact, in some uh, extreme regime, or let's say in some favorable regime, you even can tell that this is a primary thermometer in the sense that the logarithmic dependence of the current on the voltage has this simple, simple uh, form, which we even experimentally we can, we can demonstrate in some, some cases. But in general, one measures usually like, uh, um, like voltage at the uh, constant current, and this way you obtain the temperature of the, of the electrons in this uh, normal conductor here. And the other important element is naturally what I already pointed out is that that uh, this absorber here is connected to the to the heat bath via thermal conductance, uh, which is usually the the, the electron phonon coupling. And this is something which is also very well known in, in literature and 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 quantitatively known these days uh, also from the experiments in situ experiments, you can determine this electron phonon uh, coupling constant. And, and then uh, you, you have the heat power between the two systems and you can linearize it in some cases to have a thermal conductance times the temperature difference. Okay, so these are the important things. And then, then the third element which is important here is that we need to uh, control the temperatures of these two uh, mesoscopic baths, so to say. So what we usually do is we use again a similar NIS uh, junction and by biasing this junction favorably, you can either <coughs> cool the electron system in this, uh, in this uh, normal conductor here, or you can heat it depending on the value of the bias voltage here. So if you are at voltages which are just barely below the gap voltage, uh, gap of the superconductor, then you, you are cooling the electrons here. Whereas if you go above this voltage, then you essentially produce a heater, which is like a, a joule, joule heater of the electron gas. In, in the in the normal metal, and this is something which is known also for a very long time already from from the experiments from mid 90s, uh, where I was also participating in, and it is it it can really produce uh, big changes in temperature locally, and and the nice thing is that in these systems that I showed, for example here, if this normal conductor here is then uh, connected directly to the superconducting leaves here, the the uh, these uh, superconductors block the heat transport through these uh, wires, and you indeed have this kind of the um, kind of the uh, 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 textbook uh, Johnson Newquist setup possible, where you only have this uh, radiative heat transport, and you don't have the uh, conductance through the through the uh, through the through the leads uh, in a conventional way. So uh, this all this was uh, already tested uh, by us many years ago. So. So in the simplest experiment, what you can see here on the left, we do exactly what I was saying. We, we, have, a, we have one resistor here, another resistor here. You apply a voltage across a pair here, and you can produce the change of the temperature of that uh, resistor, which is so, shown by, by this blue curve here. It's a symmetric effect. So uh, with both positive and negative voltages, you, you decrease the temperature of this source here, which you can probe then with the other pair here. And then you can monitor simultaneously the temperature at the other end of the system, where, where which is separated by aluminum wire, uh, and and at the distance about 50 micrometers, 30 micrometers from this. And one can see that at when you go towards lower temperatures, these two temperatures start to follow each other very closely. So if you if you really take this ratio, of the two temperatures, which is really related to this conductance between the two, as I showed, then you can see that that this ratio is following quite closely to what you would expect from this quantum of heat conductance. Uh, not precisely because at that time, especially we didn't have the, this uh, electron phonon coupling very precisely measured. Uh, okay, so this was kind of uh, nice. We could see that uh, there is an experiment by Mikkos, Mikko Mertonen's group, uh, which made things 10,000 times better. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a wire which is one meter long and, and this way it, uh, they could even demonstrate it with this kind of a 
transmission line or or, or let's say the uh, uh, wave guide which is uh, which is uh, which is transmitting the heat uh, uh, between the resistors quite long or quite long distance. Well, then there is a point that you can also uh, modulate the heat by by uh, by changing the intermediate impedance. So in the beginning, we of course we didn't have any. This was kind of a, a system where where they were directly connected. But as soon as you start uh, to play with uh, some sort of uh, intermediate impedance here, which can be reactive impedance, like a squid here in this case, what happens is that that this uh, matching factor is uh, lost, and and you have a uh, less heat produced uh, in the other resistor in the, with the same principle, and and then this works as an LC circuit here naturally, so you have uh, uh, just some inductance which is then uh, uh, governing the heat transport between the two. And a simple model can be done in that case also to see how how this conductance is modulated by this uh, by this magnetic flux through this through this squid. And in those measurements, we could see that indeed it, it really follows uh, quite nicely. I mean, this is the temperature of a heated uh, electrode in this case, and you can see that that there are some certain values of of magnetic flux where the in inductance gets maximized, half quantum uh, fluxes. And in this case, the temperature is increasing, and we could model this quite quite nicely. So at higher temperatures, where the electron phonon coupling is strong, it has the T to power five dependence, whereas this uh, has a T to two dependence. So so here the electron phonon coupling wins, and then all the heat is really going to the to the phonon bath, and you don't see any modulation. But at lower temperatures, the modulation is clear. So this sort of thing can be done also not only by magnetic flux. This is a, a, a more recent measurement where you can also uh, do a rather um, a kind of a simple setup in the sense that you have a, a single electron uh, or let, let's say single Cooper pair transistor here which you control by gate voltage and you have the two resistors on the two two, uh, two sides and, and then this is also uh, in, in a loop here and in this case we could not quite reach the uh, uh, quantum of thermal conductance, but also in this case we could we could modulate the heat current uh, between the two by by this gate voltage such that uh, that uh, we could model it uh, quite uh, quite reliably. So more recently, uh, or, or let's say in the recent uh, uh, time, we have also uh, tried to uh, implement. Uh, uh, this uh, we try to put kind of modern qubits in into the into the game. So so here is an experiment which we called at the time he, uh, quantum heat well, and that is formed of a standard uh, transmon qubit, which is now between two uh, uh, two uh, coplanar wave uh, resonators of uh, equal frequency of about uh, five or six gigahertz, and at the two ends of this uh, uh, of this uh, coplanar wave. Uh, 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 resonators. We have we have this uh, heat bath as uh, this is exactly the same figure I had before. So it's it's this few microns long uh, resistor again here made out of copper, and 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 the same principle as before. And and in this case uh, we we have really a connection between the two, but not even a galvanic connection. It's a capacitively coupled transmon qubit in between, and and this we could uh, also. Uh, uh, model quite uh, quite nicely in the in the sense that when we measure <clears throat> when we measure the power from let's say left to the right where the temperature is uh, is or let's measuring the temperature on the right when the temperature on the left is controlled we could see that the power uh, uh, that is uh, this uh, uh, received measured as uh, as a temperature change here again is 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 modulated such that twice in this uh, within a flux quantum there is a maximal power that is transmitted through and and then uh, and and then at different bath temperatures you can see differences uh, uh, there is also some uh, extra heat here which is most likely through the uh, through the through the substrate in this case because the heat powers are quite small here and and then uh, when we go to this so called cooling regime at voltages below the cap for the for this uh, actuator uh, pair of junctions then we can see that we can even cool down the the the, the distant source at a dis distance of of about four millimeters without uh, direct electrical contact in this case, and and modeling this is very straightforward. We have kind of a uh, we have the, here the power is like the difference in the distributions, uh, Bose distributions in the two resonators here, 
uh, and then uh, then uh, it is uh, cut by the Lorentzian uh, uh, when the resonators are off the resonance of the of the qubit. There are also more uh, uh, involved results in the in the in the regime where we we were. Uh, we were uh, decreasing the coupling of the of the resonators to the to the bath, but I will not go to that uh, here. So now I will come to some uh, some results, which are essentially they are uh, uh, totally still unpublished, and and it is uh, it's uh, they came to us uh, somehow as a surprise, but and then maybe for this audience this has some uh, this is a little bit interesting also because so. In, in the experiments that I was uh, telling you about up to now, these resistors are just few ohms. So uh, they are like made out of either copper or out of uh, gold palladium with maximum resistance of few ohms or let's say maximum tens, tens of ohms. But uh, the interesting uh, question of course arises if you, if you make these resistors uh, much of higher, much higher resistance and, and what we did was that we, we started to use, uh, use uh, chromium as, as, uh, as the source and drain in, the, in this experiment. And here is a very traditional squid in between them with small junctions. So, so this is kind of the setup where, where you can expect that the, uh, that the uh, um, dynamic uh, chrome blockade is playing a str strong role. So you have, uh, you have a setup where, where the well-known POV theory should work very well. And, and we did initially we did uh, measurements of just the direct uh, current voltage measurements of this of these uh, uh, setups uh, uh, which uh, are shown uh, here. So you can see that <clears throat> that the IV curves uh, at uh, temperature of here just below 100 millik. You can see that there is uh, there is of course what you expect here. There is some uh, supercurrent feature there in the, in the center, and then uh, then uh, outside you have the linear dependence, but and, and if you then zoom in to the central part of the IV curve here, you, you have something which you can, you can really model uh, quite beautifully with the, with the POV theory. And, and, and if you look at the uh, flux modulation, you also, you, 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 you can really uh, produce something that you would, you would expect. And in another sample, which has a, a, a smaller uh, uh, capacitor, smaller size junctions, meaning the higher charging energy, we see even much more pronounced, uh, pronounced uh, dynamic Coulomb blockets, and still uh, uh, quite in quite good agreement with the prediction from the POV theory. So, so this is kind of a sanity check that uh, everything works quite uh, well from the point of view of uh, electrical transport through this squid here, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, um, uh, and and this is uh, I must say that here in this case. Uh, even the conditions of POV are not fully satisfied because EJ is of the order of temperature in this case, but, but still it seems that at least, well, with parameters which are not uh, far from what, what you would expect and which partly can be determined uh, uh, independently here, we can have a quite good agreement between the, between the um, model and the measurements. So, <clears throat> but, but the surprise came when we started to look at the at the heat transport, so, so these are now samples which are uh, which are otherwise uh, nominally identical, except that they are enclosed in a in a in a loop for measurements of the heat. So in these early measurements, which uh, I showed, uh, it we kind of uh, realized that it is uh, crucial to set a, put the system into a superconducting loop because this way you can close the current path, which is really producing the. The heat uh, uh, heat in in the in the opposite resistor. If it is if this is just an open ended circuit, then you close the loop by a small capacitance, and this is this is not what what produces the quantum uh, limited heat heat transport in that case. So so this is exactly the same, but now in a loop geometry. Of course, since the junctions are small, we cannot guarantee that they are exactly the same as as in the replica samples, but but they are as close as possible. And then we have also this same typical setup here with the uh, heaters and thermometers. In this case, what we see here is that uh, now <clears throat> at two different values of flux, uh, let's say the flux nominally zero, flux half quantum, we can see that, uh, that 
that uh, the temperature, again, this temperature ratio determined the same way as before. It's, it's uh, in, in zero flux, it's following these uh, blue dots here and in the half flux quantum, these red points here. And, and now you can see several uh, lines there. So, so the one which is, uh, which is this uh, uh, violet line here is the quantum limit. So it seems that it is very close in this case to the quantum limit. And we have, in this case, we have been able also to determine the electron phonon coupling of these chromium strips independently. So uh, we kind of uh, seem to reach really these quantum of thermal conductance here in this case. Uh, uh, and, and then if we just assume that the, the Josson current is totally suppressed, then we, <coughs> then we get this uh, line which is here in, uh, determined only by the capacitance of these junctions here in closing this, this loop. So, so the, the, there's kind of that clear uh, contrast which is given by, by a simple, uh, this uh, linear model here, because also this, if, you, if, if the inductance is small enough, then, then uh, we, we go between these two limits in, in any case. And, but the problem uh, arose there is that, uh, that the limit, of course, when the, only the capacitance matters is, is uh, governing uh, irrespective essentially of any model that we use here. But then if you use the basic P of E theory, for, or for calculating the heat transport here, assuming the, uh, assuming the uh, inelastic uh, Cooper wave current in this, in this squid here, we see that the modulation is extremely weak. So it's essentially there is no modulation whatsoever. And this also holds for the other sample that we measured. There we can have maybe a little bit uh, less uh, consistency between the experiment and, 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 and theory. But perhaps because we have quite small junctions there, the asymmetry of the uh, of the of the squid plays plays also a role. So, so there, there's clearly a puzzle there. Why why in one case uh, the POE works very well, but in the other case not at all. And here are some some of the of these uh, uh, high impedance. Uh, I mean, some of the heat measurements now as a function of magnetic flux, and and you can see that the basic POE uh, prediction is really really not showing essentially any, any flux modulation if you do it that way. So now we are of course discussing this heavily with uh, many people, this uh, puzzle, and, and I, I just present here how I at least uh, would see it at the moment. So this is of course very uh, preliminary and not uh, uh, just uh, given as a thought. So, so there's, a, uh, there's one, uh, one consideration that one should of course look is, at is that, that if you look at the uh, just a charge current through this uh, replica sample, then we have uh, when the current is composed of the uh, usual uh, uh, Josson current plus the in inelastic uh, part from uh, kind of the POE current, then the DC part disappears there because you average over sinusoidal dependence. Whereas if we are looking at heat, it's again like <clears throat> a comparison of, uh, of, of, of uh, current and noise. So because because heat is like a quadratic uh, quantity in in current, then then what you have is that uh, that uh, that uh, the part this uh, this uh, non uh, perturbed part here is uh, is not vanishing for for the high frequency transports, and you you will have uh, you have you will have much more of of uh, heat current than you would expect from just from the inelastic uh, uh, POV type type modeling. So. This may be one of the uh, of, of the differences. So, so essentially, heat is probing the high frequency properties of the junction, whereas the whereas the DC current is 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 just averaging this uh, this this part out. Okay, so that's uh, that's work in progress, and and and, and we have uh, benefited a lot from discussions with several several theories locally, and and also with. Uh, uh, Alfredo Levi Yayati, who is probably in the audience, and and, and his uh, his people in Madrid. So now, <clears throat> from uh, uh, now now I move from uh, so up to now, what we have been doing is that that we are looking at uh, a flux of uh, of uh, of uh, a flux of uh, photons, meaning that we measure like one million uh, photons at minimum per second. Whereas uh, the goal is, of course, to be able to measure. Calorimetry, which means that we would see each particular event uh, at at the time, and so the the objective is uh, 
thermal single quantum detection. And I will come back to one of the yesterday's talks also in a sec. So <clears throat> the objective is that, um, that, uh, that uh, we really would need to have a fast thermometer which is uh, which is uh, which has a low enough uh, noise so the, that the intrinsic noise of the absorber is uh, temperature noise is uh, low and also that the thermometer itself is very non-invasive, fast and 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 and, um, and, and noiseless. So uh, so what you would like to see is that once you have a source of uh, of heat which is uh, for example a qubit uh, relaxing from excited state to the to the ground state. You, you obtain a, a pulse of heat to the absorber, which then changes the temperature of this absorber by an amount, which is the energy of the quantum divided by the heat capacity of the absorber. And then after a while, it, it would relax back to the, to the uh, temperature of, of, of the bath, back to the temperature of the bath at the time constant determined by the system parameters, heat capacity and these thermal conductors. But what we are, of course, limited is by the intrinsic noise of this, of, of this system in terms of temperature. So what we have been uh, set up is to, to measure this temperature fast uh, and with a very non-invasive thermometer. So instead of using this standard uh, NIS probe, we are using a proximity NIS junction, which means that we put a clean uh, superconducting contact in, 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 uh, in, in contact with the, with the normal metal so that it induces a little bit proximity to this junction. And then we have a feeble supercurrent here, which then is very strongly temperature dependent, even at the low temperatures. And the advantage here is also that uh, the impedance of this, uh, uh, of this probe is not huge, and also that it is not producing too much heating because it's, it's measuring it essentially at zero bias, only the excitation voltage is causing something. So this, this work has, uh, we have shown in several experiments that we don't, do not have any saturation of this thermometer even down to the lowest temperatures, and we can also prove that it really measures the electron temperature of this absorber. So uh, something related to this was indeed uh, presented yesterday by Effect Gumus, where, where uh, the, uh, the joint, in the joint work where, where he was uh, presenting the work on the calorimetry of quantum phase lip. So in, in that case, uh, one can do a repetitive measurement of, 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 of this temperature uh, and, and, the, and this Phase lips, of course, they have energy which is about hundred or thousand times larger than what we are after when we try to see the you know, the, the uh, quanta from the from the qubits. So it's 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 a beautiful experiment. Uh, however, we really have to go quite a big step before we can say that we can measure these uh, single uh, photons from 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 a qubit, for example. So what is the noise uh, of this system? So if you assume that you have a perfect amplifier, everything then you are still left with your con um, thing, which is here, uh, the, the normal uh, metal is coupled to its heat bath. And this in, uh, on top of conducting heat to the bath, it also produces naturally the noise via the, elect uh, via the uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem. You can, you can really determine the magnitude of this and, it, um, it, and it's uh, related to the thermal conductance at, at the low frequencies. And then of course heat capacity, if you can measure the full spectrum of this noise. So, so this is something that we were set up uh, to measure uh, 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 a year or two years ago, and we, we managed to, uh, to see uh, uh, that uh, this, uh, uh, that, uh, that the noise, when we measure the temperature in real time, it has, uh, it has a, a noise which is not very far from the, from this, uh, uh, from this uh, limit, which is given by the, uh, by the uh, FDT. Of course, we uh, subtracted the noise from the amplifier. So this is just a measurement of the uh, intrinsic noise of the, of, the, of, 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 of the absorber that we saw. So it says that at low enough temperature, we should be able to measure uh, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, photons, which, are, uh, which have energy of one Kelvin or below, if we are at, at temperatures well below. 50 millikelvin, which is possible with our current detection method. But of course, life is not so good in reality. So, so that's why we, we have been thinking about how to further boost the sensitivity of this measurement. And, and we have uh, come up with an idea which, uh, which we are about to test in practice now is to really connect this, uh, connect this um, uh, qubit and the resonator to not only to one absorber, 
but to two observers which are thermally decoupled by, for example, a super, superconducting contact here, and then measuring the temperature of the two simultaneously. So this way, basically, what we can do is that we can do a cross correlation te temperature measurement, which then gets rid of the electrical noise to a large extent, hopefully. But also, we have some hopes to get at least part of the of the thermal noise coming from the phonons to be to be uh, uncorrelated, such that that we we really can improve the signal to noise ratio significantly. Of course, from the, the numerical simulations, things look really beautiful, but in practice, of course, the improvement will never be that good. But nevertheless, this is a way we are now going, and and I think this is what I wanted to show today. So here is. Here are the main uh, players who have been doing, let's say, for the recent experiments, of course, uh, uh, Bayan and, and, and uh, 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 Diego Subera and Olivier Maillet have been doing these ones most closely. And then uh, uh, this, uh, uh, and this uh, uh, work has been really backed by a lot of collaborations. And, and most, uh, let's say, about this colorimetry part, we have had a lot of uh, interactions with uh, Wolfgang Belzig and his. Uh, uh, Daniel Nicolich from his group, and then uh, also we discussed a lot with, uh, we had a lot of uh, interaction with Peter Samuelson from Lund and Frederick Brange, and also with Joachim Ankerholt here in the audience, I see, uh, uh, and then uh, we uh, locally with George Thomas and uh, Dima Golubev on the theory side, and then as I mentioned also with the Madrid guys on the recent, uh, recent experiment that are going on. So thank you, I stop here. Thank you very nice. Uh, thank you very much, Yuka, for this uh, nice overview and also for sharing the this exciting new results. Now uh, the session, the the talk is open for questions. If you have a question online, please uh, place it in the chat, and I will read it um, for the for the speaker. Or well, actually, the sorry, the speaker is online, so the speaker can just answer it. Yeah. <laughs> You have a question, one moment. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Yuka, thanks for the talk. I have a question, um, and it's connected to this POV theory, which you showed the dynamical Coulomb blockade. I mean, what kind of temperature do you put in the POV theory, and, and is heating an uh, okay. issue at all? Sure, sure, sure. That, that's a very, very good question, because it's, uh, in fact, uh, I go back to this Ivy curves here. So we, we indeed we took into account the heating along the bias here. So it, it wouldn't, we, we know, as I said, we know the electron phonon coupling. So, so we could uh, match it. Uh, I mean, it, it really, I don't have here the non heated ones shown, but, but uh, definitely this plays a role at, 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 at uh, biases, especially beyond, uh, beyond this maximum of the, of the supercurrent here. So very good point. It's, it's especially in this very resistive uh, environment, this, this is an important point. So uh, we start with, a, we assume that initially it's at the bath temperature and then, then we just uh, consistently solve the temperature as a function of the current uh, at there. So that's how we do it. Uh, I don't know, I mean, okay, this, all this is still work in progress. So I cannot say, for example, this deviation here above the about the uh, this uh, <clears throat> about this uh, um, maximum here in this case, whether this is due to some failure in the POV theory in this case, or is it because uh, we didn't take the heating uh, properly into account? But, but it plays a role. Thank you. Yes, we have another question. Hi, Yuka. Uh, Carla Daltimiras here. Um, can you come back yeah. to the modulation of the power exchanged in this high impedance? Uh, so, yeah, um, even before, I think it's okay. There was a slide okay. you were showing before. Yeah. This one. Yeah, this one. So, if I understand well, when you frustrate completely the squid, you only have a capacitive uh, interaction between the two baths. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then yeah. you remove this frustration and you see that you recover a very efficient heat conduction between the two of them. Precisely. That, 
So I was wondering, what is the, the bandwidth of your RC circuit corresponding to these coupling capacitance and these uh, resistors? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. So uh, it's I, I don't have the figure here, but it is uh, the RC time constant is I mean it's uh, we can even figure it out here yeah, ten to four, and this is then uh, so it's it's still it is it's above uh, it's uh, the this cutoff is above the above the thermal frequency clearly in this case above yeah yeah okay so I think that's it I I mean. See, even though you have a normalization of the DC current, it comes from the fact yeah. that you have frequency conversion amongst the photons. But here, yeah. if you excite broadband and you detect also in broadband, even though photons are massively scattered amongst all the frequency bandwidths, if you still recover it, it will still be transmitted, right? Mm. Yeah. I think you need a second order P of E, which is capturing the frequency conversion amongst the photons, and then it would give a, a higher frequency flux, as you expect. But let's say, I, I didn't quite get this because, I mean, from the RC time constant, you, uh, I mean, how is the flux modulation related to that? No, my, my point is that the normalization of the transport properties, uh, that you see these anomalous mm -hmm. dissipation, is that a single mm -hmm. photon can be scattered in a continuum of photons. Mm -hmm. But if you detect the power in a large ban enough bandwidth so that you capture all the photons which are scattered to, to other uh, um, frequency uh, scales, mm -hmm. they will still contribute to, 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 to the heat which is transferred to the other resistor. And since the density of states of the resistor is flat, if you just conserve the energy, you should conserve the, the, okay, the energy flux. We have to see, see together more closely, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, the, the resistance is like uh, 10 kilo ohms, capacitance is like uh, one femtofarad, so what you get from that is, uh, uh, let's say, 10 to, uh, 10 to minus 11, so... It's in the uh, giga range, uh, so... Yeah, so, so they are... So in, okay, yeah, yeah. I, so it's, uh, I think your bandwidth okay. is so big that you just get all the photons through the system, even though there is a massive uh, frequency conversion amongst them. Mm. Okay, we, we should see this more closely. So, yeah. Anyway, the conclusion is that uh, when this, when this uh, inductance is uh, small enough, then, then it is, uh, we are very close to this, uh, this uh, basic. Uh, sure, you, there's yeah. no... Uh, mm -hmm. sure. Great. Excellent. Uh, is there a last quick question? If not, thank you, Yuka, for the nice talk. Thank you for thank the you. questions also. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much.